Hey everybody, how you doing? Happy Easter! Happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody! Welcome to Chowderheart and Friends TV. We're doing a little uh, half and half episode this month. Um, we're doing a little bit of St. Patty's Day, a little bit of Easter. So we just wanted to thank you all for watching and for putting uh, up with me shenanigans. You'll, you'll have some fun with us, okay? So a lot of people associate St. Patrick's Day with drinking, whether you're drinking green beer or a fine Irish whiskey. People around the world are celebrating the culture of the Irish, one of the most joyful and kind nations in the world. Now, St. Patrick lived in the fifth century after being abducted and sold into slavery, legend has it that he escaped his captors only to return later to convert them and the countrymen. His holiday wasn't officially celebrated until 1631. And they say that St. Patrick drove the snakes out of Ireland. Just like Hawaii, Ireland is an island that doesn't have any snakes. And it's more likely that the snakes that he drove out of Ireland were the ancient Celts, the Druids. The Druids had long cord-like hair, similar to modern day dreadlocks. And to ancient Celts, their hair was a sign of power and prestige. And it was also seen as a gift from the gods, therefore never to be cut. In America, St. Patty's Day was celebrated officially as early as 1737 by the Charitable Irish Society of Boston, making it even more of an American holiday than 4th of July. In my family, St. Patty's Day is less about drunken toasts and more about celebrating our Irish roots. The whole family looks forward all year to mom's homemade corned beef and cabbage and colcannon, and of course everybody's favorite, green pistachio pudding with a little bit of whipped cream. And we don't sing any songs or do any jigs, but we do have a family tradition of watching Disney's 1959 classic, Darby O'Gill and the Little People, starring a dapper 30-year-old Sean Connery. So this is a story of an aging caretaker who runs into the king of the leprechaun, Brian Connors, at the old ruins of Nakhnashiga. If you haven't seen it, I really recommend you see it. It does have a 100% rating on Rotten Tomato. One of the songs that I really love to sing from Darby O'Gill, uh, it, it goes, For she's my dear and my darling one, my smiling and beguiling one. I love the ground she walks upon, my pretty Irish girl. Here's a recipe. First, you take about two pounds of red potatoes and mix them up and mash them very good. Yeah, and you're gonna add just a wee bit of butter, about about a half a stick, I'd say, and about a half cup of good milk. Nice whole milk is the best. Fluff them up, then don't forget to add the sour cream. About eight ounces will do you just fine. And then once you mix that up, next you're gonna add about a just a quarter of a, a head of cabbage. Put that on a boil for about 10 minutes till it's nice and soft. Now, just a little bit of salt and a wee crack of pepper. That should do this dish very good. Just a little bit's fine. Don't forget to crack that pepper, Sean. Okay, nice. Oh, it's looking good, looking so good here. Now, once that cabbage is all boiled, you're gonna chop it up again into wee bitty pieces. You got to have a little pieces because you don't want to choke on the cabbage, you know. Oh, it's looking so good. That cabbage, something beautiful about cabbage, you know. All right. Yes, chop it up finely, and then we're just going to toss it right in there in the potatoes. Let the juices roll on in the potatoes. Scrape it all in. Oh yeah, stir it up, man. 
And then if you can't find any bacon, just go to the store and get some bacon bits. But make sure you take out the little freshness packet, because nobody wants to bite down upon that on St. Patrick's Day. That'd be very unlucky if you ask me. Oh, stir up that bacon. Mmm. Look how good it looks. So, then you're going to find a little, what they call a casserole dish, and you plop all that in there. Plop it all in. Just go ahead. I know it may look like a lot, but you can fit it all in there, I'm sure. Ah, oh, yeah, that's right, Sean. Looking good. Get a little bit more on there on top, okay? And then there's one more piece we're going to throw into this recipe, is we're going to have to add some cheese. I like to have Parmesan cheese, because it gives a good little roasted golden color. All right, and here we go. Now, if you've had it there baking in the oven for about 20 minutes at 400 degrees, it'll come out looking beautiful like this. Look at that. It smells so good. And it's been in the oven, just a bacon away. It's a beautiful dish, fit for a peasant. And we're gonna add that to all the other foods, the corned beef and the potatoes. Oh. That corned beef looks so juicy. Oh, look at the juices. Hmm. Yeah. All right, more juices. All these juices can go right on top of the cold cannon. So many juices. Look at that. That's the whole shebang. We got potatoes, we got the corned beef and cabbage, and of course the cold cannon. And of course, always more cabbage. Now, to top it off, you're going to have a little bit of mustard or some malt vinegar. And that makes your whole recipe right there. All right, we'll come again. We'll see you next time. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Green pudding. With a hurly butt, cause an Irish pub is mighty crap. In an Irish pub, an Irish pub, the beer is foul and so's the grub. Knocking out teeth and cupping up blood. Let's go drinking in an Irish pub. Oh, Paddy, he called your wife a dog. Let's bury his bones in Maguire's bug. And the banshee's well and the berries fly. We'll go back to the pub for another fight. In an Irish pub, an Irish pub, the beer is foul and so's the grub. Knocking out teeth and cupping up blood. Let's go drinking in an Irish pub. So anyways, going back to uh, the fact that Easter is a very important religious holiday for people, um, I just thought I'd read some of the most fun parts for me um, as far as my faith. Um, so there's a few chapters here that I would like to read. Um, one of them, well, if you get the Easter story, it actually comes from from the Gospels, right? The Gospels of of the Bible, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And there's uh, something interesting, I think, here. Um, and I'll read them. Try not to bore you guys. I know you've heard a lot of this stuff before, but maybe it's uh, it's something new for you. Uh, so in Matthew chapter 28, uh, we read, um, After the Sabbath, the first day of the week was drawing. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. Then suddenly there was a great earthquake, and the angel of the Lord came and rolled back the stone and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were like snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. Come to the place where he lay, and quickly... Go tell the disciples. So then we also read here in Mark 16, it looks like the women who had been, uh, you know, probably crying all night and uh, they were getting ready to go embalm the body with, with herbs. Uh, so now after he rose on the first day of the week, he, ap he appeared to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went out and told those who had been with him while they were mourning and weeping. But when they heard that he was alive and that he had been seen by her, they wouldn't believe it. In verse 10 of Luke chapter 24, 
it says who it was. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them. So these were all women. These were all only women that were the first people that, that saw Jesus. And he was the first person that, and they were the first people that he came to uh, once he was risen. So then it goes in a little bit uh, more until just a few minutes later maybe, but they're all trying to figure out what happened. And Mary's still sitting there. There's Mary Magdalene, by the way. Um, her f Mary stood weeping outside the tomb and she wept. She bent over looking in the tomb. She saw two angels in white sitting there with the body where the body of Jesus was lying, one at the head and one at the feet. They said, woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, they have taken away the Lord. I do not w know where they laid him. Then she said this, she turned around and Jesus was standing there and she did not know it was him. Jesus said, woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking for? And then she was supposing he was the gardener. She said, sir, if you had carried him away, please tell me where he is and I will go find him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned to him and said in Hebrew, Rabboni, Rabboni, which means uh, teacher. And Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not ascended to my father. So what I wanted you to get out of it is as soon as she, she goes and she tells the other apostles, hey, I've seen Christ, I've seen Jesus. Um, they're very skeptical and they doubt her and they basically discredit her, right? So from the beginning of the Christian church, technically, um, it has been a habit to discredit women, right? So it makes sense that books like the Gospel of Mary have been somewhat suppressed. And so I wanted to just bring that up into consciousness. Uh, l let's think about this lady mother, uh, not Mother Mary per se, but Mary Magdalene and, and her contribution to the Easter story and what we know about what happened that day, right? So um, that's my takeaway on, on Mary Magdalene. I guess the other thing we have to say about Easter is, is the resurrection and what that means, right? So what the resurrection means to me is, you know, after we die, that our souls will move on past this. Uh, there's an idea of karmic cycles, right? Karmic, we, we, we die, we we're reborn, and we die, and we we're reborn. But what happened in this instance is that Christ died once and for all, ending that cycle of death and rebirth, that we can actually move on to the next level. But part of that is just going inward, right? The kingdom of God is within. And so the, the more we can go in to ourselves and um, find out who we are and our purpose and maybe even see that divine spark, we'll actually see what Christ was trying to say uh, about living again after death. Right? For me, um, my relationship with God and Christ is a very personal thing that honestly, no, normally I don't even want to talk about uh, because some people are going to be offended. But that's the truth about everything, isn't it? Somebody's going to be offended about anything. So you might as well be you. You forgot and, to turn um, to the sheep channel. Anyways. Hi guys, it's me, the Easter Bunny. And I just want to set a few things straight about whether or not I actually exist. You see, there's been a lot of talk and conspiracies about all this silliness, and I'm just done with that. And so once and henceforth, I'm going to put this conversation to sleep. Of course I exist, and so does my father, the Lord of Darkness. Secret? <laughs> we need Easter to sexualize your children and teach them about occult philosophies and science. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, what do you think we're putting in all those candies? We call them happy hormones. <laughs> now they come in four fabulous flavors. Forbidden fruit, flesh, fornication, and sex. Fun fact, do you know that basically 10 corporations own all the major food stocks in the United States? That's correct. No cap. Do you know who owns it all? The big head honcho? My dad. Yeah, that's right. The devil himself. We're in bed with them all. Big Tobacco, Nestle, the Keebler Elves. We're putting all that crap in your food. <laughs> and don't forget the fluoride in the water. <laughs> We're 
actually exists. I got one guy. What's his name? Yeah, Jesus. That guy. He did his strip appropriator. Oh, but that's good though, because pretty soon he won't exist either. Oh, you silly gooses, you persons. Pretty soon you're all going to turn into big old jelly beans with all those hormones you're consuming. We're just going to eat you right now. A knock at the door? I wonder who that could be. Let's see who it is. Open the door. Oh. Oh my gosh, it's Jesus. Oh boy. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come and sup with him. And he What's up with me? Jesus, what's up with you? You're to take Easter back and save all of God's children from your dirty pagan clutches, rabbit. That's, that's not true. You're going to be canceled anyway. Come at me, bro. Disciples 
and say, do this in a moment to me. Here, Rabbit, have some bread. Oh, bread? Um, you did his body. Mm -hmm. No thanks. I think I'm a vegetarian. You got any celery or something? No. Oh. Um, well, maybe something sweet or anything like that? Maybe some, like, um, candy or something? How about some grape juice? No! Um, soda pop? Nope. Um, anything else like that? Uh, no. Okay. Um, well, well, but, but is an Easter about, like, Easter Bunny? Then going out and having fun mm. or something in the, in the sunshine? No! What's it about, then? Well, we go to church, we read the Bible, and we read about um, the resurrection of Jesus every Sunday. Well, that doesn't sound very fun, is it? I, why can't you just go out and play some, in the sunshine and find some eggs or something? No, that's a good idea. You know, um, I was thinking about going outside and doing some of that. So, uh, why don't we do it today? Oh, yeah, yippee, yippee, yippee. Come on, let's go, let's go. But hold on, uh, I have to tell my sister about something real quick. Okie dokie. <laughs> okay, we're ready. Oh, I'm really excited about the bed. I think it's going to be really... I love, I love eggs. I love them with an attic. I know we can eat eggs in the morning and in the evening and in the rest of time. Maybe... Oh, look, she likes eggs. I like eggs. Are we going to have egg hunt? Egg hunt? All right, here's the rule, Daddy. You guys have... You have to find us what we have to hide. We have to have your eggs. And so when you uh, find us, you get the eggs that... Yeah. Oh, so you're gonna hide? But that's kind of like hide and seek, Cannon. Yeah. Oh, I love hide and seek. And it's just like you. You get eggs. I'm gonna get eggs? Yeah, you're Hooray! Okay, let's go. Okay, let's go get the eggs. I'm gonna count right here, okay? Okay. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, 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 and that's five and six and seven. Go down. Come. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. What are they on? Easter stuff. Easter is a beautiful springtime thing. It's about like love and free birds and everything like that. It's a springtime and everything. I love it. It's not about all oh, this going to church and all this stuff. It's all this. Oh, my eggs! You got my eggs! I saw you! Easter isn't about this money. Easter is about Jesus! What? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Bunny, bunny, 
ديكوريشن انا ضايع هنا جت في فايت ايفتر I cried. I told you, Bunny. The kids just would not accept you. Well, yeah. But I love you, Bunny. So we can share Easter together. Really, Jesus? We can share Easter? We can all share Easter. Oh, well, that's amazing. I love you, Jesus. I love you, too. <laughs> I saw you there. With You're the best. A demonic yeah, yeah. Fire causing quite a scare We fought it out, throwing poop all around But deep inside there's something we found Now we're making love about it Everyone fights to tell it Everybody is elevated Pagans and Satanists and Christians and everyone Everyone come together Yay! We are to love shining bright See you at Christmas Uh, well, thanks again for watching Chowder Heart and Friends, and uh, hope you tune in to see us on YouTube and at uh, Access Sacramento, and uh, happy Easter. And may the luck of the Irish be upon you as well. Caught up in our differences, lost in our minds, but then we saw the beauty in harmony, forgiving each other, setting each other free.